Bayer Leverkusen are in the process of having one of the most historic seasons in recent memory. For the first time in their 120 year history, they have won the Bundesliga, they find themselves in the final of the DFB Pokal for the fifth time, and they've made it to the semi finals of the Europa League. The West German club are on a historic unbeaten streak, largely due to the coaching masterclass of Xabi Alonso, as well as world class performances from Florian Wirtz, Granit Xhaka, and Alejandro Grimaldo, to name a few. They've managed to win the league with five games to go, ending Bayern Munich's 11 year streak as German title holders. While Leverkusen are doing the season, is unthinkable and today we're taking a look at how Xabi Alonso's side started the season and how they've gotten to where they are today. Leverkusen began their season on August 12th with an 8-0 thrashing of 4th league side Tetunia Ottensen. Leverkusen carried that momentum into the start of the season as they faced off against RB Leipzig in their home opener. A back and forth match between two solid teams would see Leverkusen come out on top in a 3-2 win, earning them 3 points. Their next two matches against Borussia Mönchengladbach and Darmstadt would come as convincing victories as Victor Boniface would go on to score 4 goals in those two matches. Match day 4 would be Leverkusen's first real test of the season as they faced off against Bayern Munich. Harry Kane's opener would be cancelled up by Grimaldo's goal in the 24th minute. The deadlock would be broken in the 86th minute when Leon Goretzka scored from inside the box. Leverkusen were seemingly approaching their first loss of the season until Ezekiel Palacio scored the game-tying penalty deep into stoppage time. Leverkusen had narrowly escaped against a strong opponent and their impressive start to the season continued. Leverkusen opened up their Europa League campaign in their next match against Swedish side Haken. Drawn into a relatively easy group with Karabag, Molde, and Haken, Leverkusen went on to win all six of their group games, scoring 19 goals and only conceding three along the way. Apart from a nail-biter in their fourth match against Karabag, in which Victor Boniface scored the game-winning goal with seconds left in the game, it was smooth sailing for Leverkusen in their Europa League group. Going back to the Bundesliga, Leverkusen would respond to their draw against Bayern Munich by going on an 8-game win streak from match day 5 to match day 12. In that 8-game win streak, they scored a whopping 24 goals, conceded just 5 goals, and held a clean sheet in 4 of those matches. By the end of match day 12, Leverkusen had a 2-point lead over Bayern Munich, and the race for the top spot was still very close. Back in the DFB Pokal, Leverkusen's second match would come versus third tier side SV Sandhausen. In a match that saw Leverkusen have almost 75% possession while putting up 30 total shots with 11 on target, you would think they dominated the match from start to finish. With the score tied at 2-2 near the start of the second half, it really looked like Sandhausen were on their way to an all-time upset. However, Leverkusen would go on to score 3 goals in the last 10 minutes of the game, keeping their unbeaten season alive and booking their spot in the round of 16. Back in the Bundesliga, match day 13 and 14 would be somewhat of a disappointment for Leverkusen. Facing off against a strong opponent in Borussia Dortmund, Leverkusen would go down 1-0 in just the 5th minute after a goal from left-back Julian Ryerson. Leverkusen would respond later on in the match as they controlled possession but could only convert 6 of their 23 total shots on target. The game-tying goal came from Victor Boniface in the 79th minute as the match would end 1-1, a result that Leverkusen would have to be content with. Looking to bounce back from their game against Dortmund, Leverkusen would find themselves facing off against VfB Stuttgart. A back and fourth first half that saw chances for both sides would end with Stuttgart on top after a goal from Chris Furik. Florian Wirtz would respond at the start of the second half and the 1-1 scoreline would hold out until the end of the match. While both matches hadn't been the outcome that Leverkusen would have wanted, they were still on top of the Bundesliga after match day 14 with a slim lead over Bayern Munich. In between the Dortmund and Stuttgart games, Leverkusen would play their round of 16 tie in the DFB Pokal against second tier side Paderborn. Leverkusen were in control for the entirety of the match with goals from Boniface, Palacios and Schick earning the squad a convincing 3-1 win. Leverkusen were now in the quarterfinals of their home cup. Coming off their back to back draws in the Bundesliga, Leverkusen wanted to bounce back and that's exactly what they did. Match day 15 through to 18 would see Leverkusen win all 4 games in convincing fashion. They would go on to dominate Frankfurt in a 3-0 win with Boniface, Frimpong and Wirtz showing up on the score sheet. A 4-0 win against Bochum would see Schick score a hat-trick in the first half, with Boniface adding to his tally in the 69th minute. Their 1-0 win against Augsburg would see them in complete control on the stat sheet, but a crazy goal from Palacios near the end of stoppage time would be enough to grab the win. Finally, their match against Leipzig would go right down to the wire as Piero and Capier would score the game winner in the 90th minute after a wild match from both sides. Match day 19 would be incredibly unlucky for Leverkusen as they would absolutely dominate Mönchengladbach from start to finish, but would miss all 5 of their big chances on the way to a 0-0 draw. They would redeem themselves on match day 20 as Nathan Teller would score a brace in the 33rd and 52nd minute to get the win over SV Darmstadt. By the end of match day 20, Leverkusen's unbeaten run of 20 games had only gotten them a 2 point lead over Bayern Munich and the race for the Bundesliga was well and truly on. Leverkusen's next game would come the DFB Pokal as they took on VfB Stuttgart in the quarterfinals. This match was relatively even as both sides had their fair share of possession and chances throughout the match. A back and forth game between both sides would see the match coming close to a 2-2 draw until Jonathan Tass were the winner in the 90th minute 
keeping Leverkusen's dreams alive and sending them off to the semi-finals. The game of the season came on match day 21 when Leverkusen faced off against Bayern Munich with the title hopes for both clubs on the line. Leverkusen dictated the tempo of this game and came out strong scoring the opener in the 18th minute. They would come out from the halftime break filled with motivation and would find their second goal of the match coming from Grimaldo in the 50th minute. Leverkusen would go on to score their third and final goal deep into stoppage time grabbing all three points in one of the most important matches of the season. Going into match day 22, Leverkusen had a five point lead over Bayern Munich and from that point on it's been total domination. Following their impressive win against Bayern Munich on match day 21, Leverkusen have been simply unstoppable. Spending seven games from match day 22 until match day 28, they have been unbeaten, scored 14 goals, conceded only five, and have three clean sheets during that run. Meanwhile, in that seven game span, Bayern Munich have won three games, lost three games, and drawn once, creating an immense gap between first and second place in the Bundesliga. Going into match day 29, a 16 point gap at the top had opened up, and Leverkusen were just one game away from their first ever Bundesliga title. But before we talk about the heroics of match day 29, let's go back to the other competitions that Leverkusen are still in. Following their win against Stuttgart, Leverkusen faced off against second tier side Fortuna Dusseldorf in the DFB Pokal. In a match that was dominated by Leverkusen from start to finish, Frimpong opened the scoring in the 7th minute with Adley adding a second in the 20th minute and Vert scoring a brace in the 35th and 60th minute. Leverkusen now find themselves in the final of the DFB Pokal for the first time since 2020 with a chance to win the cup for the first time since 1993 as they face second tier side FC Kaiserslautern in a few days time. Turning our attention back to the Europa League, Leverkusen faced off against group stage opponent Karabag in the round of 16. The first leg provided plenty of action as Leverkusen were dominating possession but simply couldn't convert their chances. The Azerbaijani side would go into halftime with a convincing 2-0 lead and Jabi Alonso's side had their work cut out for them. Verts would get one back in the 70th minute and with time running out, it looked like Leverkusen's unbeaten season was coming to an end. However, a header from Schick in the last seconds of the match would bring the score level at 2-2 with everything to play for in the return fixture. The return fixture would be just as chaotic as the first leg as Leverkusen and found themselves down 2-0 in the 67th minute. While playing against 10 men after a red card for Karabag, Frimpong would open the scoring in the 72nd minute for the German side, but even that wouldn't be enough. With the game winding down and Leverkusen's hopes and dreams on the line, an absolutely incredible brace from Patrick Schick in the 90 plus 3 and 90 plus 8th minute would give Leverkusen the win, securing their spot in the Europa League quarterfinals and keeping their unbeaten season alive. The quarterfinal matchup between Leverkusen and West Ham wasn't nearly as eventful, with Leverkusen scoring two goals near the end of the first side to get a 2-0 advantage on aggregate. The return fixture was a bit of a scare for the German side as they looked visibly exhausted and played some of their worst football of the season, but still managed a 1-1 draw against the English side, earning them a spot in the Europa League semi-finals against Roma. Leverkusen's historic season brings us to match day 29, where a win against Werder Bremen would be enough to secure their first ever Bundesliga title with five matches to go. The match would open with a goal from Boniface from the penalty spot and a beautiful strike from outside the box from Xhaka in the 60th minute would give the home side a considerable advantage. Florian Wirtz would go on to score his first ever career hat-trick with goals in the 68th, 83rd, and 90th minute. By this point, the dream had come true for Leverkusen and as the fans stormed the pitch to celebrate with their team, their 120 year wait for their first ever Bundesliga title was finally over. By Leverkusen had officially become champions of Germany. While their historic season will end with at least the Bundesliga title, Xabi Alonso and Bayer Leverkusen are far from satisfied. They are one game away from their second ever DFB Pokal Cup, three games away from their second ever Europa League, and five games away from finishing the Bundesliga season. Their biggest challenge will come in the form of Roma in the Europa League semi-finals, and if they can get past the Italian side, a final win against either Marseille or Atalanta is in their reach. While the Europa League isn't the Champions League, if Leverkusen managed to win the DFB Pokal and the Europa League, then there is no one out there who can discredit their season as a treble winning campaign and one that will go down in the history books. So there you have it, Bayer Leverkusen's incredible season from the very beginning to almost the end. But what did you think of their incredible run? Let me know in the comments below as well as your predictions for the last few games of the season. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more football content, tier lists, and everything in between, and as always, I'll catch you next time.